Hello and welcome. I'm Master Lama Risaji, and this is our Tuesday edition of Risaji Speaks. Don't forget, we got teachers training this afternoon at 1 p.m. And also, we have Master David's live class tonight at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, which is 6 o'clock Pacific Time and 9 o'clock Eastern. Just let Lama G know, and after the tour, I would imagine there's going to be a lot of energy in that class. Today's subject matter is going to be titled, Awaken the Senses, How Nature's Beauty Enhances Our Connection to the Chi. Well, you know, that was something that Boganathar got right away, right? You get out into something like this, and he took his yoga. He took his mala yoga, japa yoga, mantra yoga. He took his pranayama yoga. He took his kundalini yoga. And he took his hafa, sun and moon yoga, to nature. And it was like this. Over 3,000 years ago, before any industry, before corruption, before any pollution like has been going on the last 100, 150 years, none of that exists. You could take a, a glass right in the Yancey River and just drink it. It was amazing, right? And what he learned was two incredibly basic things that the yoga disciplines had not taught him or reminded him. Not only was it powerful to be in a single asana or posture like in yoga, but the transference of weight in a particular way from one leg and one foot to the other did something totally different to the chi. It moved the chi very dominantly like the element of water itself. The other thing that he noticed, what was the motif? What was the background? Because when he had this kind of background, he got one kind of chi. Up high in the mountains of China, he got another kind of chi. Around incredible old redwoods, banyard trees, maple trees. He got another whole different chi. And he also began to notice that his sensory perception began to change. His sense of tasting went off the chart. When he would get a fresh piece of fruit, not only would it excite his DNA, but psychically, it would excite him to no end also because there was so much prana, so much chi in that fresh fruit. The assimilation was almost nothing. It was almost instantaneously. Then the sense of smell came in, you know, right after the rain and it had been warm that day and the rain came in, he could smell that change in nature for miles away, sense of hearing got better. Sense of sight, much more keener. And then the sense of feeling, and then the feeling accelerated the other four centers as he noticed that his chakras were opening up and literally reaching out toward the divine mother herself. It was powerful lesson. At that time, he kneeled himself before the Divine Mother and said, you will now be my guru. And she was for the next four to five decades. And with that, his yoga got so strong, amazingly strong. Then one day, a general who was actually at that time one of the young emperor's chief advisors, but he had been the emperor's father's head general. So in retirement, he promised the father's emperor that 
he would protect his son. But he felt lost for ones because the Chinese herbal doctors did not know what to do. He was dying with a neuromuscular disease. And back then, there was really nothing to do for that. And it was kind of a rare disease at that time, 3,000 years ago. So he's heard of this holy man that was healing people by them just being close to him. And he thought, what could I do? And so he sucked him out. But when he found him, he said, this man is not Chinese. He's darker than the average Chinese. And he looks like a hermit. And when he got within a couple of feet of the monk, he smelled the stench of you know what hair down beyond his waist, beard down beyond his waist, eyes sunken back, didn't look like he cared, frail, had done so much fasting, was living so much off the psychic energy of nature, real, pure chi. The general came up and immediately the holy man called the general, right? General Chow, he said, what took you so long? <laughs> General Chow, what took you so long? He knew he was coming in and, and the general, the consult to the young emperor was taken back. How in the world did you know my name? And how in the world did you know I was coming, old man? He says, don't let this hair and this beard and the whims of an old man vision lower you. About that time, he would have had to have been somewhere between 75 and 95 years old. But he was amazing how spry and limber and the strength and the stamina of this guy. We got to clean you up before I can present you, he said. So what Boganathar learned was nature truly is, as Jesus said, God's playground, God's pharmacy, and only yielding to our childlike nature, do we understand and combine the kingdom with heaven, with Eden's kingdom herself. The divine mother and the divine father through the dance of the Tao, moving her way and his way through us. It's really fascinating when you think about it incredibly humbly. It's absolutely amazing. Baraka Bashine, may the blessings be to you and to your glorious family. See you tomorrow on Hump Day. Good to be back with you folks. The gathering will be kicking back into gear tomorrow. So bring all your news of Philly and we're going to get ready for Nashville. Music City, USA. Dr. Wakefield, here we come. God bless you all.